Hey, Brent from Brent's Roundabout. Checking in for week two of my 100 miler training plan and let you know how things are going. So, week one was good. <laughs> going to share out my screen here and show you, as I mentioned last week, my training plan. Yay. <laughs> um, here it is. This is the same template I use for my clients, use for myself, why not? And it really just talks about what am I doing more specifically. It is my detail plan. So I actually have two, as I've mentioned, I've got a detail plan and I have my high level plan. So this is the long run, medium distance, and then total weekly totals for all 60 weeks. Now again, may not actually need 60 weeks because a lot of this up through week 34 is literally just me getting back to a more consistent running and base, building up the base. And then this was based on one particular plan I found online because I just wanted to use it as a reference once they started getting again to the longer weeks and the later weeks. Well, just kind of some ideas for those long runs, you know, doing it more of a back-to-back -back longer run and a slightly less longer run or do a big run and then a, you know, smaller medium run. Anyways, mine is Wednesday, Thursday for my long run and then and Thursday is my medium distance run. Now going back to my detailed plan, this gets in more nitty gritty of more day to day, what am I doing? Is it an easy pace? Am I cross training? Am I working on a dr uh, running form drill? Um, resistance training? Anything particular note for my long run and my medium distance run? And yeah, I mean, just kind of going down, had a little bit of overage, obviously just you know, for the runs and what it was, but overall felt good. It felt good definitely to be back into a pattern. Um, and I pick four days just off the get go. That's what I'm highlighting here just to kind of have a start. Um, I wasn't sure <laughs> even after this week, I was just like, do I want to go down to three or again, I think what I'm going to do for week two, and that's why I brought this up was just keep it what it currently is now, which is the first day, uh, first run of the week is a little bit longer. Um, it's 1.3 miles versus one mile. If I go back up, uh, if I go back down, have another kind of day off, just left it open. Um, Cause again, I'm just doing four out of seven days. Uh, another running form drill, that second run of the week. And then the third will be the long run, <laughs> which again, it's all relative right now. Um, and then my end of week run is my medium distance run. So a little bit more than the other runs out of the week, um, but not quite as long, obviously, as the long run. And then the weekly total building. Now, again, I just kind of took the gold standard of <laughs> 10%. And I think that's what I'm going to do for these first two weeks is just stay with my current plan, stay, keep it where it's at. Um, sorry, zooming back up and forth. <laughs> you're seeing what you're getting, or you're getting what you're seeing. No editing done. Um, try and patch this up is more just documenting again how I'm feeling what I'm thinking as I'm going through this myself kind of self-analyzing and self discussing it with myself <laughs> anywho um <laughs> lost my train of thought <laughs> but I want to just keep to what I you know gave myself to do uh which is this particular plan and Oh, I know where I was going with that. So, cause I was already starting to kind of, to feel it in kind of a good way. Like, okay, I'm getting back into, I guess I can probably stop sharing for the time being. And then I'll bring that back up if necessary. It's really just kind of getting back into a consistent, feeling consistent with running. A lot of times in the last few months now, ever since I really kind of ended up, winded up injured to the point where it just wasn't smart to keep running on it. And that was back in July, if I remember correctly, May, June. Um, running as of late has been more just, okay, do I feel like running today? Yes or no? No. Do I feel like doing something else? And then I might go bike, walk, longboard, hike. It, it's, it, it just depends. Um, so really what I was finding is I was like maybe going for a run once a week, twice a week. And so again, I just want to put, cause I knew I wanted to get into doing five days a week. Cause that usually ended up, it's always ended up being good for me just and in general, it kind of is a kind of a good standard um, to go with. Cause it always gives me the first day of my running week is always off for me. And then eventually be three days running one day of right now. It's just um, 
resistance training. Eventually I'll throw in some cross training as well. And then my long run, medium distance run, and then the week starts back over and then just continuing. But I needed to just kind of even take a step back and realize like, okay, going from one to two days a week to five days is a lot. So let's maybe just double that and see how four days feels. And since, and I also felt like for myself personally, that wasn't a lot of, the, the runs themselves are not a lot of distance, but if you notice, it was like a mile for some of the the weekday runs um, for two of them. And then it was 2.4 for the long run and 1.5 miles for the medium distance run. And that felt manageable quite and doable. And I was still excited to go out and run. It wasn't overwhelming thinking like, oh my gosh, I got to do this. Now I say that and we got back last night after visiting um, a place that we're looking to move or potentially looking to move. We're just really, we want to go check out the area. It's Blackmore. Black Mountain, North Carolina. I'm pointing behind my shoulder because that's, I believe, north. <laughs> and it's north of here. Um, and we got back late. My wife ended up taking my daughter, um, putting her to bed, even though it was technically my turn. So we take turns of who's helping or get ready for bed, who's actually in the room reading books anyways. And I was like, okay, I've got time. I would normally go for a walk now. I'm just going to go do my run. Like I didn't I think initially I was just going to plan just to either skip it um, and not really be hard on myself. I think it's one of those things where it's really kind of assessing like, okay, I've got the energy. I'm feeling good about going to go do this run. I should go do this run. Like if I'm going to go walk, I might as well just go do that mile and a half run in that case. In which I did. Got my running gear on, went out, did the, did the run. Just kind of had a nice meandering <laughs> mile and a half. Um, didn't work on anything too particular just kind of try to keep it easy because again we were on our feet most of the day walking around checking out areas you know just we were in the car so I definitely noticed my um left Achilles which was part of the injury way back at the beginning of May of this year and then um my left hip which has kind of just been clicking snapping back and forth in place uh walking and running it was it's never really hurt it's just been a thing ever since and that's why I stopped <laughs> training for my birthday run back in June, July, um, earlier this year. It was really just the two of those. I don't think I really ever let my Achilles heal or really kind of get back to a good point and giving it time off. I just kind of kept running, changed the shoes, and then was like, oh, hey, feels okay. And then didn't really think. And then but I noticed like it was stiff. It got just progressively more stiff every time I was waking up. And I was like, okay, I just need to really dial it back, stop really just kind of back off the running altogether and then come back into it. And that's where I ended up only doing like the one or two days a week and then doing a lot of other cross training things to stay active hiking and whatnot. Um, but anywho, so this week I, especially last night I was feeling my Achilles a bit, nose my hip, but we were also had just been in the car for an hour and a half, a little over an hour and a half coming back and you know, we're also driving there. I've noticed my Achilles being a little tight in the morning, like this morning, but then once it kind of loosens out, it's fine. I don't really notice it too much. So really that's where, again, I'm also going to keep going into week two, just the same distance. And I'm just going to assess it day by day. Like if I'm really, if I noticed any of those things getting worse between my Achilles or hip, I'm going to completely back off and, you know, just not push through it. Um, I've even started noticing lately, even before I started training this, my, I've got left so there's a lot going on in the left <laughs> side of my body. Um, I had a bursitis in my left big toe uh, two years ago, a year and a half ago. It, it was, but it's, it, it was probably the most painful thing I've ever felt in my life. If you don't know exactly what it is, it's basically the little sack around um, the joint. And uh, I'm not going to explain this technically right. So I might just need to look it up. But basically part of it had like ballooned out and was kind of like protruding out from where it normally should. It was just excruciating pain. Like the whole big toe had basically just blown up in size and couldn't really walk on it. It was just like this whole thing. And it was just me training, trying to train through it. Like I kind of noticed it leading into that. And like, you know, what I tell our people is like, heed the warning signs, back off, do it. I fall into the same issues too. I, I train myself into a hole basically, or I get so excited with a goal. And that's kind of the thing I've, I've really learned over the last couple of years is like, yeah, it's okay to be excited about the goal, but you need to be realistic. And it's something I always also reiterate to people is with a grain of salt. It's like, yeah, you want to have that excitable goal of train. You know, there's a certain level of like, 
and you just gotta know yourself of like when it is too much and when you're pushing through something you really should be resting and that's what i've really learned hence why i've kind of got these little flags on these different points in my body of us like is that worse is it better is it okay is it no different than what it was the day before and just it taking it as we as, as i go um so yeah we'll see what week um feeling good with week two keeping the, you know, still four days a week. I forget exactly when I start upping it to, if I share this back out. Let's look week one, week two is still four days a week. Week three, is still four days a week. I don't think I really even consider because I only built out four weeks. Which again is if I'm working one-on-one -on -one with someone is what I'd probably do anyways. Um, and the reason for that is then we can then more easily Reference. Oh, you know, I did go into week five. Ha ha. <laughs> oh, there's the easy week. Oh, 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 oh. Sorry. Typically, I would do three, four weeks at a time. I remember what I did now. It, the way I, when I initially set this up, for whatever reason, I think it's because I was building so gradually and, well, sorry, zoom went over the, the right. You know, with these runs not being, they're just, you know, and they're definitely on the shorter side. I gave myself a six weeks until I even give myself an easy week in week six. And then I back back off um, to 70%, if I remember correctly, from week five. And then I'll need to assess and restart building this out in week seven. Um, and even then, it, it, it could come week three once I bring this back up next week. And I'm looking at it like, okay, feeling really good. Let's try building up the distance maybe by 15, 20%. First, currently it's at 10. Oh, there's week three. And then that would change these numbers here. Or again, just leave them as it is. Or I might find do week three as is, come into week four and be like, okay, I just need a bit of a, a break, easy, easy back. And week four might become an easy week, rest week, and I'll bring that back down in week five and then start building back up from six. So really just kind of allows a lot of, I stopped sharing, <laughs> feeling that out. But that's why I did the, the, the detail plan because you really need to kind of at least get a sense of, and this is especially important, like if you have a, a race in mind, you need to put that race on the calendar and then work your way backwards to figure out, all right, where's the longest run going to be? Okay, then I know, okay, these three, four or so weeks are going to be my taper weeks. Um, do I need to plan in a next longest race in there? put that a couple weeks ahead of that long run. And then that starts getting at least some distances in on the calendar that, or at least in the spreadsheet, how I do it, um, to then start building back, building out the other, um, building out the other total distances for the week, the other long runs, so on and so on. Um, again, just based on my certification, what it recommends doing so. It also recommends don't build it, not to build more than two miles per week week or at least anytime you're building that going over two miles for i think believe the total and also the long runs i have to go back but anywho the main other main thing is like not building too many weeks in a row so really you're giving yourself two weeks at a distance or you're giving yourself a week at a distance rest week come back and then either at the same distance or then build again um just so you're not building so you could do it you know building week back to back weeks so it's like okay i've got two weeks here then I can build another third week. Anyways, I believe we've talked about it in a previous video. And um, yeah, yeah, we'll just go from there with how it's going. <laughs> Trying to think anything else um, worth of note. I don't think so. Those are kind of the main things. I really just want to leave this kind of as in the moment. Um, and this week was really just me recording what I would have been doing. So instead of I even thought about, do I want to put this caveat at the beginning of the video, but I guess here I am talking about it anyway. So it, it just, you know, just trying to suss this out. Like, you know, I want to show you what I'm normally doing. So <laughs> it's kind of counterintuitive because like most times I would prep, you know, before a call with a, especially with the client and before I sit down. So I know what's going on or since I share out the train plans, I'd probably, or I'd jump in just to take a quick look. Okay. Where are they at? What's, you know, is there anything glaring? Like, have they not filled out anything for the past week? Or maybe they just forgot. Or they're, you know, they haven't been. But um, it was, you know, just before our, our weekly touch base call. So, anywho, I just wanted to more show 
kind of what that prep would look like and also what me, you know, assessing and responding to how I'm going for myself would look like as well. So really just trying to show both sides of the coin <laughs> and, uh, and uh, go from there. So hopefully you found this in informative, helpful, if not, hopefully it's entertaining at least. <laughs> And uh, yeah, let me know below what you, if you're getting something out of this, if you're not getting something out of this, or if you want to hear something specifically, then uh, <laughs> we'll work it in somewhere in these videos or just do in our little one-off spin video and just keep these just to the, the more talk about me and my training. So still excited to keep going this uh, journey towards a hundred miler and uh, yeah, until next week, <laughs> happy running.